day, good people, good people, good beautiful people, good healthy people, good thinking people, good fun people. It's a good thinking people. Good thinking people. <laughs> thinking about things that make us feel good. All right. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Might even be bad things that make us feel good, but the bottom line is we're going to feel, feel good. good. That's it. Happy Sunday, Taz. Happy Sunday. You know, I was talking to you a couple weeks ago, and I'm loving that some of our conversations lead us to these podcast conversations. Definitely. And you and I were talking about our young adults in our homes. It's hard to say they're children, but young, our young adult offspring. Correct. And how we learn from them. And, and have learned. And have learned. Yeah. And how perhaps this is the way it's supposed to be. That we're not just to, to see this relationship as a one-way wisdom-giving, guidance-giving relationship. But man, what we learn when we watch how they're interpreting their lives and interpreting the world. It's like, it's fresh air, it's bright sun, sometimes it's rain. And when we watch not to correct, Mm. when we watch in expectation of learning something new, Mm. and when we watch without judgment and critique and criticism. Yeah. That's next level. That is that's some that's some next level stuff. That's revolutionary parenting. I think it is. I, yeah. I do believe. I think for young that's, adults anyway. Pardon for young adults. When for, we think about yeah, young adults, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Even calling them young adults, you know, sometimes that that's predicated upon it. Are they eighteen yet? Are they out of my house? But it, they're fascinating beings, aren't they? They are. They are. It's. I mean, I know we used to be them. But, you know, it not seems so we, far along. <laughs> I don't think we used to be them. We, used we probably to be used to be someone adult. like them. Yeah, we used to be somebody and called us that. Did you your know? parents call you young adult? Yeah, I think in my early twenties. I was going to say when we were out of their homes in college, probably in taking college. care of our selves. Maybe, but maybe not at eighteen and nineteen. I don't remember my grandparents calling me a young adult. I don't remember. Hmm. I don't know. I can't think of it. Yeah, yeah. But this this, but this, this conversation, journey. this this journey, and this part of the journey is inspired by my eighteen year old, who I almost called seventeen. No. But I'm pretty sure we had a birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> She's eighteen. She's eighteen. She's eighteen, and you know. I look at her and, A, I think she's an amazing big sister. She has a fantastic big sister herself, and she is a big, a great big sister, too. She takes pride in that, She too. takes pride she in really it. Does. She really does. It doesn't ever feel like it's a chore when I'm in her space. And, and she, maybe that is when I'm not there, mm-hmm. but when I'm in her space, it's never a chore. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, she's been big sistered well, and she is big sistering well. Yeah. And man, you know, I don't have an older sister, a biological older sister. I certainly consider you um, my older sister in spirit. But growing up, I remember wishing I had an older sister in the house to like let same me tag here. along. Oh, same here. And that girl takes her little sister places and they call it dates. We're doing a sister date today. Oh. Yeah, it could be anywhere. Wow. <laughs> and so <laughs> you and I both have younger sisters. Sisters, younger yes, siblings. Too. Can't necessarily say that I thought of taking my younger sibling as a date, with mm-hmm. the exception of, funny story, um, my mother and grandparents didn't want me to date t- too soon, too mm-hmm. early. Um, and I remember one of these mini proms, they were like, oh, you can take your sister as your prom date. And have same matching dresses. <laughs> that was like the only date I remember with my sister. And I was like, and that kind of huh. ended it for you, didn't it? I'm yeah, done. You're done. Oh, I'm done. Yeah, I well, don't need this date. So did she go with you? Let's not talk about it. <laughs> you want to see the matching the lavender is, dresses? I wanted to know how your mother found a miniature version, like you know, a size for a high school student and a elementary. these lavender dresses. You want to know how? Yeah. Innovation, sis. Somebody made them? No. Had an aunt who just got married, and this <laughs> dress is from her wedding. <laughs> it was the bridesmaid in a flower girl. In a flower girl. <laughs> they can be your junior prom dresses. That's a sister day. Come on, creativity. Let's talk about 2021. Come what on, that looks like. No, let's get back to your 18 year old. <laughs> so, yeah, my 18 year old, you know, what I'm observing, of course, I think she's amazing. And I'm, I like to use the word fascinating. I'm, I'm sort of mesmerized by her sometimes. And I hope that others see what I see. And I know some will and some won't. We do. And so as I watch her navigating the world, she's she's always been a person who's loved relationships. She's always, even I can remember in preschool, who's my friend? Who's my friend? Who's my friend? And here she is at 18 saying the same thing. Mom, I don't have a whole bunch of friends. And so what I'm watching is her behavioral response to loss when it comes to some relationships. Her behavioral response to loss when it comes to jobs, mm-hmm. even if she left on her own. Her behavioral response to leaving high school. She's graduated. And so I'm watching behavior that she does when she's in something that she feels is a destination. 
and then her behavior when she's out of it. Wow. And that behavior is what, you know, she and I were having this conversation about the meantime. So for her, in the meantime, she turns it up. Self-care on mm-hmm. 1,000. She's like, Mom, let me go show you this place near the lake where I go to meditate. I'm like, you med- what? what? Meditating near a lake down these stairs next to the water, girl, by yourself? Like she had this whole, and I come and the sun comes up. Well, hold up, you be out here when the sun, you know, just. <laughs> She's a young adult, that's me. And I had to go, mm, do you bring your pepper spray? She says she does. So just like this idea of finding a place to be with herself and be quiet. Mom, let me show you where I go when I write my poetry. Mom, let me show you where I go when I'm doing my walks. You know, all of these things pouring into herself. But it's mean time behavior, Andrea. Because all of this is either a response to, as you said, mm-hmm. loss. losses. Losses. There's right. been a shift. Yeah. Some kind of, um, and I, I think in her 18-year-old brain, she might even call it um, a painful departure from something. Yeah. So I worked here. I no longer work there. I'm looking for a job. You know, I was with this person. I'm no longer with them. When's my next relationship coming? I'm in an argument with, you know, a homegirl. We're not doing too well. What do I need to do to feel better? So so all of this in the meantime then becomes something to temporarily mm-hmm. satisfy, cope, mm-hmm. um, soothe. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they all they all lift her, her chin, her spine goes straight. She's walking beautifully until she reaches the next destination. Until point. she gets into another space. And guess what disappears? Herself. Her love, her her med- yeah, everything that she's doing, whether that is her meditating, her um, holistic approach to self, mm-hmm. all that becomes secondary, that. Mm-hmm. or does it does it disappear to all I together? I think it becomes or just becomes background noise that it's not the priority right now mm-hmm. because I'm now I lost this, but I've replaced it, or it has been replaced by something and someone. So then all of a sudden, yes, me, I'm fading to the back. And that thing, that replacement is an exterior replacement. The exterior replacement is still not of self. Right? It's- and yet she knows the only way to get right, to get restored, to really step fully into healing is to go within and do all that interior work. So- but when that next thing comes along, you know, so we're sitting on the patio and she's, she says, Mom, do you want to watch the sunset with me? And I'm like, how many times? How how many more times do I have that this eighteen year old is yeah. going to say yeah. our our version of a Saturday night might be a sitting in lawn chairs on the patio watching the sun go down? So I'm like, yes, let's do this because this is going to be a memory. I don't know how many times I have this in front of me, yeah. and that's when we had the conversation. I'm sitting there going, would we be in this conversation if you had a boo? And which would we saying? be sitting on this patio watching the sunset? If you weren't in this sort of disagreement with your homegirl, would we be watching the sun as it descends if you already had that job? Wow. And we both were quiet and we said, no, this is meantime behavior. As beautiful and as precious as it is. And so then we began talking and even in that, like, wow, you know, 46 year old mom with this 18 year old, like we are vibing and I'm listening to her talk. And it's the question became for us. How do we maintain these practices that we use for restoration? And we use for self-love and self-care. All of that. All of that. But to not use them as reactions to something that has happened, but to use them as rituals to keep feeling right and good. I heard you say earlier that's the the healing part. And so we're using these practices and routines to heal us temporarily. As if somehow when when life, um, when we're replaced certain things and people in our lives, that the healing journey has to stop Mm -hmm. for me that part yeah that it ends with the arrival of something or someone else again we're putting ourselves we we put it we're putting ourselves behind um we're putting us our healing life and our healing journey behind being in relation with anything whether Mm -hmm. that's job with with girlfriend with with her new boo Mm -hmm. we're still pulling all those things that we know to be good for us to be healthy for us Mm -hmm. what how did that make you feel, Tasneem, as a parent? Like, could you relate to that? And did it make you say, hmm, wait a minute. Have I ever done anything like that? Uh, am I doing things? <laughs> yeah. Right. No past tense for yeah, me. Yeah. Again, proud that we were having this moment. I don't know that at 18 I had those moments with the elders in my family. Um, I don't know that they regarded me as the source of any kind of interesting insight. Like I think that. that's the important part, too. You <laughs> right. started this conversation, the lessons that we learned from our 
our, our young adults, mm -hmm. when we allow ourselves to be recipients mm -hmm. of what they bring. Yeah. That's different than our generation. Yeah. Yeah. I know many parents our age would have a problem with thinking that our young folk bring some some new revolutionary thinking mm -hmm. or some bringing light to any situation. Yeah. 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 And, and I think one of the things that I enjoyed, Andrea, was that we were in that moment two women, two human beings in women in, in feminine form, um, having a conversation about how we take care of ourselves. That was it. It wasn't necessarily mother daughter. No. It wasn't necessarily junior senior. It was two human beings in feminine form Talking having a about conversation care. about how we get ourselves right. Yeah. And then the observation of, of our experiences was how do we stay right even when we feel we've arrived at that thing we were waiting on? What if the arrival of the thing is really not external? What if the arrival of the thing has been me all along? <laughs> I is. think that's the truth. I, because you, we talk about these rituals. These, and we both have, we both started some amazing rituals. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Greenway. Pan pandemic came. That's yep. a loss, That's right? That's a loss. Loss of everything we know to be normal, everything we know to be grounding, everything we know to be ritualized. All I normalcy, get up, I go, go to on. work, I drive, I do this, I go into an office. Yeah. I can what fly, did you, I can travel. All those I things. I can do all those things, right? And we're kind normal. of, we're flailing, right? We're adrift. What did you pull into your routine in the meantime to you know till till we get back to normal all and that language to the corona leave to the corona leave <laughs> to we off of covid i was like oh i'm gonna commit myself to, to this self practice of mm -hmm. self love i'm gonna ground myself in daily meditation and be intentional about it like to the point that it became obsessive right and that was my green way yeah that was oh i'm going to get out and exercise and meditate two things i do when i'm on the green way mm -hmm. right and I said, I'm going to do this in the meantime until I can get back in the office, until things get back to till normal. Until we come out of, till till we we come come out out of COVID. COVID. Till we come out of COVID. That's it. You and I had a practice. Yes. We did. We, we would were, do fashion shows in the shoe store. We would do. I know them people at Marty and Liz are like, I wish they would get out. Oh, my God. You've never seen a New York runway walk in Franklin, Tennessee. Shut is that Franklin or Cool Springs? That Whoever was Cool Springs. Is. Yeah. Woo. The way we strut. And the <laughs> Marty laughter. Liz, we picked up that new ritual in the meantime, you mm -hmm. see. But... It soothed us. It gave us so much time together. Just sister bonding time. Let alone we got some amazing cute shoes. Yes, we do. That we're still wearing. Truth be told. But the our shoe game is, is nice. But also, truth be told, when things shifted in our lives, when we got to new positions. When, when we met new people. When we met new people. When we lost folk. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't been to Marty and Liz in we a minute, have we? We haven't done a, sh a yeah. fashion show in the shoe store. No, we have not. <laughs> we, yeah. They deserve one. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about, you know, I think the pandemic is a good example. We People have reflected upon um, the positive ways it's impacted their lives. And I think this conversation is about taking that impact and making it not a response to the pandemic, but making it this infusion of a new way of being mm -hmm. full time. It's from the meantime to the full time. So full time means I walk on the green way because it makes me feel good. Period. It doesn't matter if we're in the middle of a pandemic, if we're not. It doesn't it's just matter. because it makes me feel good, mm -hmm. and I know it's good for me. And yeah. it is, it's is—it's good for me. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when we come out, out of COVID, right, and we will one day, yeah. you will still be walking I'm on the I'm going to still way. be doing it. What about you? What, what practice or ritual did you take on, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden when there was a shift, we can go back outside, or there's a shift, you forgot that that ritual yeah that that, that time of, of whatever it was of, of that healing journey of Tatsanine's life I used to spend hours reading I mean even as a kid one of my fondest memories as a kid is walking with this huge backpack on my back to the library down the street from our house maybe four or five blocks walking by myself on a Saturday morning loading up with books piles of books in my bedroom I would sit there and read and my siblings would complain because they would be calling me Tat's name and I just would tune them out <laughs> Like, you know you hear me and I'm like yes like I would be in the world that was in the book right you know it was my escape it was where I picked up all kinds of understandings of things like just I went into new world it was everything LeVar Burton talked about in Reading Rainbow yes you, don't make me talk about butterflies and please don't not mm -hmm. a song no Take a look. Ty's name it's in a in book, book. Mm -hmm. a reading a butterfly in the sky said I can fly twice as high I flew twice those books high. took me everywhere and so I used to do that and especially if I was not coupled yeah if if my homegirls went around if I didn't have relationships romantic or not around me it was like I would I would 
I could just be me mm. as I had been as a child, which was hours spent reading. When I got deeper into social relationships, as I mentioned, my daughter loves being social. What I sacrificed was that thing that made me feel like me, which was my head in a book. Yeah. You know, because then as you get into social relationships, you get into judgment. So it's like you always reading. I guess what's in your purse is a book, huh? You done bought a book to the movies? Why do you have a book? Because any moment is that's a moment. That's shifting. That's, and so I began to sort of recharacterize yourself. <laughs> and so once those social relationships became more not just important, but more apparent. So I'm working in relationships. I have relationships. I, I'm having children and I'm in relationship with them. I'm married. Relationships, relationships, relationships. The relationship with myself became less identified with things that bring me joy. It became identified with service. So what I did a couple of weeks ago was I spent Saturday reading. All day? At least for until the afternoon. And did you feel like, you just said a minute ago, it was the time when you felt like you could just be mm-hmm. you? Because that's task name. That's core task name. Core task name is I don't need all... Those things. I appreciate the relationships, right. but my relationship with that book right there, that's that's the one in front of me. And I gave myself over to it. And I, I think I sent you a picture. You like, did. And I was so impressed. And it was like, this is old school Tasneem. And the question I have for myself and the same one that my daughter and I are pondering is how do we not lose that when we arrive at the next destination point? Because we're preparing. So Because the next destination point is never really about us and our arrival. It is always contingent and predicated on something and someone else. What, what happens if we about. stop at? Or, okay, so for those people who don't want to stop it, what if you want to just figure out how to do both? How do you maintain strength in your own healing journey mm-hmm. and also be of service in those other ships and spaces? I think we have to stop giving so much of ourselves away. Oh, you know, so it's like the time that I spent saying, well, I'll just finish that book later or I'll read it before I go to bed. Right. That'll be. Oh, I'll just read before I go to bed. Before I used to read in the daytime, honey, daylight hours. <laughs> Not like it, scrambling. For yeah, the it wasn't, last it wasn't the, minutes. It wasn't the leftover time. No, I said this isn't going to be the leftover, leftover time. time. And so I need to stop giving away my good daylight hours to meaningful and valuable people. But guess who else is meaningful and valuable? Yeah. If you are only giving yourself leftover time. Who I don't eat leftovers mm-hmm. past a day. It's not appealing. Isn't that interesting, though? So think about it. I, I, I don't. You know I don't. I don't really eat leftovers after, like, day one. I Maybe mean, except for, like, my family Thanksgiving meal. But <laughs> other, than that, other than that, yeah. I just don't. Because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't don't serve same, me. Right? It doesn't hit the don't same. Hit the same. So if I'm treating myself mm-hmm. like some leftover chicken. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll gosh, just do without. You, yeah, I would. You just, you just want. i like, that's okay. I don't yeah, want that. I'm too I'll, tired. I'll just be fine. So it's like, so, you know, my daughter and I saying this and looking at each other and saying, whoosh, you know what? Wouldn't it be something if we could imagine that mean time behavior becoming full time behavior and getting out of this idea of that, you know, if I'm not already at another destination point in another relationship with whomever and whatever. That what I've prioritized continues, that it doesn't stop. It's not an in between act. It's not a because I'm waiting. It is the journey. It, it's the whole thing. It's the full thing. journey. It's never a destination. So if, if if me and this self, these rituals that we've created, we created these rituals out of survival, out of, of, out of just being creative and knowing that we had to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the meantime, but if my journey is about the self, whatever that self, that self healing is for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Then, about being ourselves. Then that, you said it. You said, when I can just be myself. So if I can just be myself mm-hmm. and consistently pour and not give myself leftovers, how am I going to do that and balance this, 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 this act of service to all? Because yeah. it's, it's who we are. We know our love languages. We know who we are at our core. Doesn't name at our core is that sister who loves to escape in a book. At my core, I have to be grounded. Mm -hmm. And I know that 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 clarity and that that groundedness is, I find that mostly when I'm out meditating in the greenway. Yes, you got to be out in nature. You got to be out in nature. I have to. I have to. Whether it's water or whatever, I have to be grounded. Totally you. Like you send me pictures. I'm out here again. Twice a day out in nature. So that that must be incorporated into whatever arrives in your life. that That doesn't become the thing that departs. That doesn't leave. Whatever we incorporate into our lives has to make its way around these things that we do, these righteous rituals. What do we do to get ourselves right? So if Yamu, for example, my 18-year-old, if she 
if she meets someone, and I hope she meets a fabulous someone because she is a fabulous she someone. She is. And they're, you know, talking about spending time together and all that. She will put a beautiful fence around her meditation time. Yeah. And that will be that. Like, this is my, I'm not giving this up. This is my righteous routines, my righteous ritual. She will put a beautiful fence around the time she spends writing poetry. Mm-hmm. It won't be she only writes so, so she can write sappy love poems about loss. I no. think there is so much that we can do to learn from Yemu's experience and mm-hmm. what she shared with us. Yeah. As that 18 year old, it's amazing if, if we could learn how to do that. If we could learn how to not put all those things that, in her meantime, rituals, um, making them secondary, losing them when they become uncomfortable or not liked by by the other ships that we're in. Um, and then the belonging, the self-belonging, and that self is, is gone. Yeah, it's powerful. You know yeah. what I just realized? Sometimes the new ships don't even ask us to let go of the things. We do it on our own. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Isn't it? They don't come in saying, why oh, you got to spend all that time on the Greenway? That's oh, you just stop taking walks yourself. Right. They don't say, why are you always reading books? Because we assume that somehow... There's not enough room. The new destiny must always be bigger than the one I was on, which was mine. That's crazy. So there's not room for you and them. That's crazy. And somebody's got to take the L. So you And you said in another episode, why (laughs) somebody's going to win or lose. Why does it have to be you? Yeah, somebody's going to be disappointed. Yeah. And so you put the book away. You say, well, maybe I'll just walk on the greenway three times a week. Yeah. When you've been walking nine times a week. Because somehow that new destiny has told me that we've allowed whatever experiences on these destinies in these journeys that we're getting to. We've allowed somehow this this thinking that that has to be the forefront and everything mm-hmm. else is secondary. And if not third and fourth, not less. How do we what do we want our listeners to join us in this journey? I love this yeah. journey. You said it was this idea of righteous routines. Yes. Righteous routines. What do we do con- continuously? as a ritual that gets us right that we will defend that is not expendable and that that we that no one will even ask because the goodness and the and the, the joy you see in my face is because i had time to read the joy in your face is because you took a walk like all of those things this is what's making me the beautiful person you want to be around right and i love that we we use that example of our runway because we that's that's not also accountability so on my healing journey We've decided to surround ourselves with, with people with each other and other people like us in our spaces who can support this healing journey yeah. and hold us to it. Yes, push it. When's the last time you went for a walk, Andrea, right? Yeah. To ask what you're reading right what now. What are you reading? Mm-hmm. And maybe our listeners will also say when last time you guys had a shoe, uh, a run. Could be. You know, a fashion show in the shoe store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's accountability. Yep, it is it the is. healing. Oh, I it love is. it. I and love it's not. It. And so we're getting out of the meantime. We're going to the full time with these righteous rituals. So I think that's what I'd like to ask our Truth Be Told family is, what are the things that we're doing that we will take from the meantime and make full time? What are those things we do? Because, you know, I don't have a boo. I don't got this job. I not don't have this because of by. the COVID. It's not the just to get by behavior. Just, you know, to something better come along. I'm going to sit here and eat this hummus. No, go on and explore vegetables and things you want to eat because this is your life today. The whole life. It's not your half life. It's You're not living the fullness. A, this is the full life the right here. Of me, yeah. It doesn't get fuller because somebody else comes along or a job comes along or a situation changes or you finally move or you got that new house or you got the car. Oh, you had the baby. None of that stuff. Right now, today, what is the thing you're going to do that was once considered mean time, that is full time, that you will continue to do because we know it keeps us right? Righteous. What's that thing? What is it? Love to hear from yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to see you on the green white says. And I uh, can't wait to see what you're reading. Hey, it was so good. And okay. in the meantime, until next time, dear friends, not, not, not just in the by and by. Not just in the by and right? by. We're in the here and now. We are Ooh, here in the now. Hello. Until then. This is Truth Be Told. <laughs>